Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune, but with a twist. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, and Oakland native. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, and secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. This month, we have some very special episodes. Each week, one of my friends will be taking over the podcast to share their favorite deep cuts with you. This week, we have a host who is a fellow singer, songwriter, and fellow ukulele lover, Dodie. Take it away, Dodie. It's 365 with Dodie, Dodie. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365 with Dodie. On this day in 2009, the first episode of Parks and Recreation aired on NBC. With its star-studded cast, including Amy Poehler, Nick Offerman and Aubrey Plaza, the sitcom ran through 2015 and became one of the most beloved shows of the era. Let's look back at the impact of satirical mockumentary. Spoilers ahead if you've never seen the show. Amy Poehler stars in Parks and Rec as Leslie Nope, a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed government employee. As the deputy director of the Parks and Recreation Department in Pawnee, Indiana, she doesn't have much power in the grand scheme of things. This is a comedy, of course. It's written by Greg Daniels and Mike Schur, who masterminded shows like The Office, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and The Good Place. But part of the show's charm is its subtle advocacy for the importance of local government. Even while poking fun at dull government bureaucracy, Leslie can make meaningful change in Pawnee. In the pilot, Leslie meets her soon-to-be best friend Anne Perkins, played by Rashida Jones. Anne is upset that an abandoned condo project in her backyard has left a giant pit, and her boyfriend Andy, played by Chris Pratt, fell into the pit and broke both of his legs. Leslie makes it her mission to turn the pit into a park, a goal she won't accomplish until season two. Also, it's worth taking a moment to acknowledge Chris Pratt's magnificent range as an actor. Now he's known for his role as the superhero Star-Lord in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so it's especially funny to see him get his start as a helpless doofus who fell into a pit. Like many great television shows, it took some time for Parks and Rec to hit its stride. During its first season, the show didn't get great ratings. At first, NBC wanted Daniels and Schur to write Parks and Rec as a spin-off of The Office, so their choice to make an entirely new show was a bold move. But over time, the risk paid off. The following season, ratings improved, and in season three, two fan favourite characters were introduced, Rob Lowe as Chris Trager and Adam Scott as Ben Wyatt, Leslie Nope's equally dorky and sincere love interest. Say what you want about Jim and Pam, but Leslie and Ben are just as iconic. After the show's finale in 2015, Vulture reporter Chris Kopkow reflected on why the show resonated so much. So many sitcoms centre around the fumbling mishaps of selfish, arrogant characters. Think Seinfeld, Friends, Arrested Development, or It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But Parks and Rec is sickeningly endearing in just how much these characters love each other. Parks and Rec embodies the spirit of the age-old meme. Maybe the real abandoned pit was the friends you made along the way. Screenwriter Mike Shaw's next project, The Good Place, portrayed a similar spirit, though Leslie Nope and Chris Trager definitely wouldn't have ended up in the bad place. Call me optimistic, but maybe now people want to see epic arcs of friendship and love on TV. Parks and Rec is responsible for some of the most enduring jokes on television. Have you ever heard someone say to treat yourself? That's a Parks and Rec joke. In season four, Tom, Aziz Ansari, and Donna, Retta, create a new holiday called Treat Yourself Day, where you throw all caution to the wind and indulge in an ultimate day of self-care. It's a Taurus's dream. Now fans celebrate Treat Yourself Day on October 13th, the day that this episode aired in 2011. Along with shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Parks and Rec streamed a reunion episode in 2020 to raise money for pandemic relief. In this episode, which aired on April 30 and now streams on YouTube, we revisit most of the cast to see how they're doing coping with pandemic life. Tom is pretending to be on vacation in Bali, but it's just his Zoom background. Ben is using his time at home to get back into claymation. Leslie, of course, responded to the pandemic by creating so many different committees that she wouldn't have time to stress out about her impending doom. We all respond to the stress of the pandemic in a different way, maybe by playing Ben's board games, Cones of Denshire, or maybe by binge-watching our favourite sitcoms. But we can learn something from Leslie and keep our loved ones close, even if that's on Zoom. Now let's talk about music. On this day in 1977, American singer-songwriter Jared Way was born in Summit, New Jersey. 
If you're an emo kid at heart, you probably know him as the lead vocalist of My Chemical Romance, wailing on songs like Welcome to the Black Parade and I'm Not Okay. Jared Way was inspired to start My Chemical Romance after the 9-11 attacks in 2001. He knew that he was always passionate about music, but the tragedy showed him that life is short and precious, and he wanted to take his passion more seriously. Shortly after, he wrote the song Skylines and Turnstiles, which appears on MCR's first album titled I Brought You My Bullets, You Brought Me Your Love. The band wouldn't find critical acclaim until their following record, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, released in 2004, which went platinum. From then on, the rest was history. The band broke up in 2013, but in December 2019, they played a reunion show in LA. They planned to tour the world in 2020, and theirs was the hottest tickets on the market, but that tour got postponed because, well, you know. For now, MCR fans, like the rest of us, are eagerly awaiting the time when it's safe enough to attend concerts again. And now it's time in the show in which I will look back on my calendar and have a look what I was doing on this day, April the 9th. So it looks like in 2017, on the 9th of April, I was at a video convention in Amsterdam. Um, and I have a picture here of me meeting Rhett and Link, um, who are two YouTubers and podcasters, actually. Um, they... Uh, I was actually huge fans of theirs um, when I was younger and they ran a competition in like 2012, which I entered and won. It was to cover their song um, and they are a huge reason as to why I started posting on YouTube because they sent over quite a lot of their audience um, to my page. So yeah, super grateful for them and for that day of meeting them. Thank you so much for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back tomorrow for more stories from yesteryear. It's 3.65 with Dodie, Dodie. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 3.65.